Perhaps Cuyahoga Valley National Park's most famous feature is its preserved section of the Ohio and Erie Canal. It might not look much more than an antique ditch today, but during its heyday in the mid-19th century, it connected the Ohio River to Lake Erie, moving goods, people, and news all around the Midwest, well before planes, trains, and automobiles. Alongside the canal, you'll find the towpath, which was used by teams of horses or mules to drag barges full of goods upstream. So why bother building a 300-mile canal? And how'd they do it? To answer those questions and more is Park Ranger Rebecca Jones Macko. Ranger Rebecca, thanks for meeting me. Oh, thank you for having me. So, when was this canal built and who did the building? This section of canal right here was built between 1825 and 1827 because this section was between Cleveland, Cleveland, and Akron. Now, it actually took them five more years to complete the whole canal all the way from the Ohio River to Lake Erie. And at the time, there was a fever in America called canal fever. They were digging canals <laughs> in the East Coast and people were thinking, wait, we could just keep digging those canals further west. So the only prescription was more canals. canals. Got it. Yes, yes. So they would, let's dig a canal. So the first canal was the Erie Canal. And e even as that was being dug and as it was filling with water and as they're starting to use further and further sections west, the economy's changing and people are like, hey, so this is a really good idea. They started hiring immigrants chiefly Irish, but also some German and whoever was willing to work for 30 cents a day. So 1820s, 1830s, I would imagine not only you're only getting 30 cents a day, but that you didn't have hydraulic backhoes or power tools. How did they dig this canal out? They had power tools. <laughs> These, the right and the left. Um, they were using hand tools. So they would use things that, that we wouldn't think of as digging tools. They used plows, shovels, they used horses and mules, but the way they used them was to pull things away. So why bother building this 300 mile canal in the first place if it was going to be so difficult? For most of the settlers, they thought of this area as a wilderness and they could grow crops here. But how are you going to get the crops to the hungry cities on the eastern seaboard. You're gonna take your bushel of grain and start walking. <laughs> and then, you know, all that overland journey and you know, you might get a quarter for it. So they needed some kind of reliable transportation service. So the canal gets built. This is a, a way to get things around the state, out of the interior of the country. You mm -hmm. don't have to go over the mountains. So what kind of goods were they moving around here on the canal? So here in Ohio, we had great timber. We were growing grain, pork. People had beef. You had all these raw products. So we could ship those out. And in return, things are coming in like fine china, cotton, cotton clothing like were, was being woven in the eastern mills. Things that nobody likes today like chocolate and tea and coffee. That's and not true. I like chocolate. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> so those kinds of things were coming in and people were getting and they were getting goods and fancy goods and, and I often tell people the canal changed everything. It changed what you wore, it changed what you ate, it changed how you interacted with people. So places like the Canal Exploration Center started as taverns or stores where you could get off a boat, go in and have a refreshing bite to eat. Um, the menu might be a little different than what we're used to today, but you could get something different besides whatever was on the canal boat. So it sounds like this canal made a huge impact mm. on this region, both uh, culturally and economically. Why isn't the canal used anymore? It's a really good question. So you can imagine what first started making an impact on the canal traffic, that thing we call the steam locomotive or railroad. So that made an impact, but what really put it out of business was a flood. Really? We would call it a superstorm today. It rained for nearly a week solid. And in the spring of 1913, that flood just about, well, you may be aware it made almost made Dayton a smear on the map. And they thought that it was going to just rip things out through here. And they did dynamite some dams and things in Akron. And when the water came through and finally started receding, there were millions of dollars in damage, not just to the canal, but also to the railroad. And the state had to make a decision. Do we rebuild the railroads or rebuild the canal? You can run a railroad year round. You can't run this year round. So mm -hmm. the railroad won in, so with a few raindrops, the 
canal life ended. Well, Ranger Rebecca, thank you so much for teaching me about the Ohio and Erie mm -hmm. Canal. It's such an under understood piece of American yes. history and it's really, really fascinating. So thanks so much for joining me today. Well, thank you for having me. Ohio isn't the most mountainous state in our union, but it's not exactly flat either. A canal barge leaving Portsmouth on the Ohio River heading up to Cleveland on Lake Erie would have to gain around 500 feet in elevation, peaking in Akron, then descend another 500 feet as it made its way toward the lake. But water only flows downhill. How's a canal barge going to gain elevation? What's it going to do? Take the elevator? Yeah, that's exactly what would happen. Engineers designed water-based elevators. They just called them locks. and. I'm standing in one right now. The barge would come into the lock and then gates that would be right here would close. A valve would open, filling the lock with water. Once it got to the right level, the gates on the other side of the lock would open and the barge would float along its merry way. Our national parks don't just protect unique ecosystems and geologic formations, although they do a really good job of that too. They also preserve our country's history. Speaking of which, you can learn more about the Ohio and Erie Canal when you visit Cuyahoga Valley National Park by checking out the Canal Exploration Center. You can learn what it was like to live and work on a watery interstate, uh, read diaries and newspapers from pe people who were actually there, even try on a 19th century barge captain's coat. I mean, who hasn't wanted to try on a 19th century barge captain's coat? It's the closest thing you can get to time travel short of hopping into a souped up DeLorean because where canal barges are going, they don't need roads. <laughs> Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.